our support and resistance is so glad everyone could join us here on Thursday, the 6th of June, uh, presented by Chris Forsick and, of course, Tarantula at Admore Markets. And um, please take a look at the Admore websites, Admore Market websites. We have a lot of stuff there that uh, you would like and enjoy, from analysis to calculators to uh, you name it, to the spreads that you can check out, a lot of cool stuff. So take a look. Um, please be aware, just of course, the user risk disclaimer regarding. Oh, aha, uh -huh. okay. I think now you should be able to see my screen, right? No. No. Uh... Something is going wrong with the technology, I think. I mean... Yeah, I don't know what, what's happening. I think that you are a presenter, I'm a panelist. Let's see. Um... Now I have the option here. So we should get screen. Does everyone see a screen now? Yes. I think you do, right? Alrighty. So the usual risk disclaimer regarding the fact that Forex and global financial markets is considered high risk and please be aware of that and talk to an independent financial advisor for more advice on that. And uh, please be aware that this webinar and recording is for educational purposes only. Okay, so thank you for your attention on that one. All right, today we're going to take a look at uh, an in-depth analysis of uh, how to use the support and resistance in your Forex trading. And we're going to take a look at what it is, why is it important, and you know, what is, what kind of levels are we looking at, and uh, how can we use them. So what kind of examples um, can we see in the market. All right, we'll show some screenshots, of course, as well. So guys, let's let's start with uh, what is support and resistance. We need to define it. So for me and uh, for everyone who uh, do uh, and who does uh, technical analysis, it is uh, that support and resistance are horizontal levels, and those are very important horizontal levels. That means that uh, price uh, tends to magnetically gravitate to uh, towards those levels. And usually what it happens is uh, the price bounces of uh, those levels. So a support level is a, a price level where the price tends to find support as it is going down. Resistance level is where the price tends to find resistance as it, as it is going up. So when we trade those levels, we always trade uh, selling off uh, resistance and buying into support. So we don't uh, do any trades, uh, for example, scalps and breakout trades as we did, for example, buying into resistance and selling into support. So we always want to find support level and resistance levels. Uh, those levels can be found on virtually on every time frame. Uh, uh, and uh, my opinion is that uh, that uh, uh, the more uh, the higher time frame is, uh, the more important those levels are. So basically, when we are trading intraday trades, we use, we try to find four level, uh, our sorry, four level, uh, uh, four hour level of support and resistance, and one hour levels of support and resistance. Uh, also, when we scalp, uh, we use hourly pivot points. Those are those tend to be the best for scalping purposes. But uh, now, let's concentrate uh, purely on support and resistance as there are many indicators and many, many uh, trend lines which define support and resistance. So support levels are horizontal trend lines of, uh, of uh, support where price uh, magnetically gravitates when it is going down. Resistance level is vice versa. So we want to see the bounces of the support and resistance and we want to trade it. It is best used with FIBO retracement confluence levels. This is purely what I use for, for trading. If you follow my post, you know that I, I really uh, like to see uh, those FIBO retracements confluenced with, with uh, horizontal levels of support and resistance. My favorite indicators, uh, well, I had, I had a favorite indicator. It was a more Mac level, also Camarilla. But uh, today, I like to draw those levels manually. Not just today, it was last, uh, maybe for last year, year and a half. I really prefer to use my own levels, but those, those, those are not just my own levels. I like to pick those levels manually, and for that, you need to have experience. So basically, uh, just for, for starters, use, use your, uh, your own indicators. Those are 
Camarilla pivot points, Fibonacci pivot points, more MF, those are really, really great indicators. So price technically follows those levels. Uh, we can see some bounces of the support and we can see bounces of the resistance, but uh, eventually those support and resist levels will be broken. So after the retest, we uh, find another support resistance level. So X resistance, when it's re retested, it becomes support. So how does, uh, for example, resistance levels qualifies to be support levels? When the resistance grow, when the price grows the resistance, it usually is followed with a retest. If retest follows like a continuation, that's BPC pattern, breakout pull by continuation, that resistance level is now support level. So a resistance turns into support. Is the same for is the same for support. Uh, when support is broken to the downside, and after the retest of that support level, that X support level has now become a resistance level. So that is basically how we how we do that. And there is, you know, there are many many support resistance levels. I, I tend to I really like to to follow it historically. So when we see that those horizontal trend lines, horizontal trend lines, are touched more than two, three, four times, the stronger the level is. And we usually found those levels around, around pivot points, around 50 and 00, zero levels, because those are magnetically the strongest levels for the price. As big banks follow 50 and 00, zero levels, so support and resistance is clearly defined as this. So we can move Sounds on good. to the next slide. Yeah, Chris, that's, that's it, basically. I think that was a very thorough explanation. I, I had something prepared too, uh, you know, just basically saying the same thing uh, as, as Tarantala has just said, key levels and, uh, you know, trend lines, horizontal lines. I think we can, we can skip that for a moment because it's, it's basically pointing to the same thing. And here we can see some examples, right, of uh, SNR uh, support and resistance levels. Uh, yeah, now I'm just, uh, I'm just watching. Much, actually. Yeah. yeah, I'm just watching the price because I, <laughs> this is really, well, this exceeded all of my expectation. Uh, for this pure example, <laughs> the price really went to 32.77. Which example? Uh, uh, Euro USD. I, I'm watching Euro USD at the moment. Ah, okay. This is true. What a jump! Okay. How much is 30, it? Thirty-two seventy-seven. Uh, uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Thirty-two seventy-seven. Seventy-seven. Someone is really losing the money today, and I, I I'm just now I'm I'm really wow. sorry that I have traded. I I just got it, some twelve pips, thirty-one fifty. I sold it and I got it. 30, 31, 38, I closed the trade. And this is really exceeded all my expectations. And look yeah, at I this did. now. 3150 was a huge resistance area. I didn't expect such a massive push up like like that. 30 yeah, to this reminds me. Wow. Uh, this reminds so that me is that even day. breaking the bigger top at 3240 actually. Yes, 3247 was my was my top. And I, I have, I will show the next, uh, in the next few slides, we will see those manually drawn levels. And you will notice 32.84 on my chart. This is manually a drawn level and just how the price tends to gravitate to those levels. So it's, it's really, I, I really prefer those, those, those manually drawn levels. So different examples of SR indicators, manually drawn levels, Camarilla, hourly pivot points, which are used for scalping. Moremat, Fibonacci pivots, 0, 0, 050 levels, and all historical pivot point indicators. So, for example, if you use indicators for drawing support and resistance lines, you, you always need to or try to find uh, with, uh, with historical prefix. So, for example, historical Camarilla or something like that, because those are really uh, um, indicators which are best used on higher time frames, and uh, when you when you see uh, historical buyers and sellers, you will you will make your entry much easier. So when the price pulls back to historical 
buyers or sellers, and it is confluence, for example, with Fibonacci and 0, 0, 050, it's more or less a signal to enter the market. So, professional traders don't use indicators for, tra for trading uh, the markets. They don't, uh, most of us don't use those arrows, stochastic crosses, and so on. We use pure price. So, always use. If you don't know how to manually draw the level, manually draw the level, you should try to use some of these indicators. And I will show you in the next examples uh, how you can use it to your advantage. Alrighty, sounds good to me. I uh, also have a few I look at. Uh, I'm personally not that much looking, I don't know if it's Murray Math to be honest, that well, so I'm looking forward to that actually. <laughs> but uh, uh, this, these are the main ones I use. For example, tops and bottoms, highs and lows of candles, uh, fib retracements and targets, trend lines and consolidation zones. Um, so those are my main you know, key, key um, patterns and indicators and tools I look for to define which are important support and resistances. So I made some screenshots regarding these five things that I tend to find uh, my favorites. And after that, then we'll take a look at uh, what Toronto has in store for us with regard to the pivots and the Murray math. All right, so hang on for that. Looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I, so Lehman will we'll show you those examples in a second, all right? After these uh, examples, I will show you regarding tops and bottoms and high and lows. All right, so here's some um, screenshots regarding, for example, a high or a top in this case, what kind of importance it can have with the market. You can see here an exact stop to the pip. In this one pushed a bit, but in fact it's just a, kind of a false breakout and wicks right back in with a huge, or drops right back in with a huge wick and a massive rejection, which signaled actually was the first moment of this entire downtrend on the pound, what brought it pound dollar, which brought it all the way to the 148 level, uh, 1500 pip drop there from uh, that top and that pin bar slash wick. All right, so definitely important level. You can see you can see, and it was a major resistance. Now here on the left, you can see is an example of some tops as well that definitely brought a move down, but in this case, we didn't get a major fall, we didn't get a 1500 pip fall, but we actually, um, you know, still a d decent drop of maybe a few hundred pips, but then we found support as well, and you can see that every time that the market moved down here and here, we, we found support off these lows, and instead made another attempt up. There we didn't find a much of a drop, and instead, finally broke through these resistance levels. And now the funny thing what happens is that we broke through resistance and we hooked back, in this case, to the same resistance levels and bounce off it. All right, so that's a pretty good example, I think, of where resistance nicely um, played out for a, uh, a grand down move. And another example, oh, sorry about that. No. Sorry, I just lost my, all right. Another example where resistance, of course, did have an effect, but then support was more important and pushed the currency to break, hook back, and then now the resistance became support, all right? Now we also have here two trend lines where you can see that these can also be support. Here, this is a classical trend line, right? But you can also see that a bottom trend line can sometimes act as support as well. Even though we are moving down, it can act as support as well when we touch uh, a level, uh, maybe even a falling wedge pattern, something like that, acting as support. All right, so that was the first example. That was, what was it, the day chart? Yeah, daily, pound, dollar, daily. This is very recent price action. I'm curious actually where the pound dollar is right now. <laughs> Toronto probably it's, can you check for me 
I mean, this was a screenshot of 30 minutes ago. It was at 155.25. Uh, uh, pound is now uh, 56.25. <laughs> so that's a, that's a cent higher in the meantime. Things can change rapidly, as you can see. 56.35 at the moment. <laughs> 45? No, just <laughs> no, 40. Oh. <laughs> 38. 38 is okay. <laughs> 40 now. Okay. <laughs> it will hit the 160 soon and then probably two. <laughs> uh, you know, guys, th these are all stop grabbers. Now the price is going, going up and someone is trying to sell it and the price is, is, pick up, is picking up all, all the, the shorts. So it's really stopped grabbing all oh, now it's 56 50 almost so it it really goes up and uh, you know don't ever ever in your life try to short into market like this uh euro is heading towards 33 it's 3267 now the pound is 5650 so don't be short dollar is losing all over the board so uh, be patient. Um, I really I miss this move, but I'm really not sorry because if you have a strategy that you work, you don't ever have to be sorry for this. Uh, oh, someone is gaining money, but oh, believe me, someone is losing very, very big and hard. That's a huge move indeed. Very, very huge move. So it looks like uh, yeah, it looks. I mean, a lot of people thought maybe the pound dollar was going to make. A down move here after this, this, this. You know, of course, we had a, a huge downtrend on the pound dollar. We made a correction up, and this was seemed like a continuation. Many thought that it would be a continuation, but look at that. One more upside. Amazing. Well, excellent. I hope that markets will be at least uh, volatile as they have been. Uh, maybe they were uh, a couple of years ago. We have more chances to trade it, but of course. These massive moves are just very, very dangerous. Yeah, that's that's crazy. It's like a rocket. I mean, if yesterday it was around 153, and now you said just 56.40, 350 pips. Well, that's even nothing compared to be honest, compared to the pound odd, which moved 500 pips in one day. Crazy stuff. But the odd is the Aussie is losing uh, in value or is losing a lot of ground against many currencies, but. Mm, so it seems so. Yeah, at the moment at least it has lost a lot of ground. So, so um, if you guys want to trade Aussie, I'm watching. I personally watch the 96.70, something around that 96.60.70. I may be short if we get there. Okay, so that's a tip. All right, that's okay. a heads up there. Well. George has a question. The triangle is actually. Um, nothing special to it actually. It's just a um, fractal indicator which indicates that there's two candles to the left of the candle and two candles to the right of that candle that are lower or higher. That's all. It's just an easy way to see tops and bottoms. So here we have an example of double bottom instead of double top. This is very recent. And in my articles, I was already saying here, actually, that watch out, we're going to see some retracement when we're moving up here. I expected a, more like a 786 or a 618, but was double top. We had a news event here that sent the pound dollar, I think, a bit lower than usual. But anyhow, that set aside, it was double bottom. And after that, we uh, made a, started to make an aggressive move up. Now here you can see, first of all, in this recent down move, here, for example, a level that was broken back, uh, or here a level that was broken, small cons consolidation zone continuation. That same level was used in here for that down move. But once we broke this resistance level, you can see that even within the break, we had a hook back and continuation, and then a bigger hook back. Probably, if you would zoom in to this time frame, you you would probably see the same then uh, happening on you know, 15 and one hour, and you would see maybe a couple of bounces there. Just looking at the four-hour chart, you could already see that there was a decent fight going on because we have two wicks at the top here, wick at the bottom, so you can just imagine what that looks like probably on a 50-minute chart. 
but eventually uh, a bigger breakthrough and a bigger hook back then again becoming support not only within this small area. So even a nice maybe head and shoulders, but that's a different story. So that's uh, you know using support and resistance to see how these levels are important. Uh, let's see, someone's asking if if this double top or double bottom fails, how often that it fails. I don't know. It's I don't have any statistics on that. Mm. Any idea, Tarantula? I don't know. Uh, sorry, Chris. I was really I was really not paying attention to to what you were talking at the moment because I really this this wall is impressing me. So what was the question again? <laughs> uh, Kalen is asking how often this double top or double bottom fails. Uh, it it depends. It depends. Uh, usually, usually double bottom. Uh, okay, as always, support and uh, with all support and resistance levels, there is no percentage uh, percentage average of fail and successful attempts. Uh, you need to uh, stack the odds into your favor. How you do that? First, if you have, for example, a double top, is it confluenced with fib retracement? Are we in downtrend? So in this particular example, I would always, I would always drive the FIBO retracement from last highest swing low to swing high to swing low. So I will find the retracement. If it confluences with a double top, that's I I now I have for around 65, 70 percent that a double top will be successful. For example, if that is this double top, that's the, the second try to break the market. If, the, if on that particular second try to break the top and that try hasn't been successful, usually price will reverse. But after a third time, as we can see on this picture, that usually will be a signal that a double top is really losing its ground and it soon might be broken. So you need always to have a confluence. You cannot trade it uh, just just naked. You need to have a candle. For example, how I do? I teach, for example, also practical uh, naked trading. So you need to have pattern, some sort of bearish pattern, uh, bearish reversal pattern. We did some webinars are uh, mentioning those uh, bullish and bearish patterns. So you need to have bearish pattern close to resistance, and if that resistance is double top, you you can have some. Also, confluence with fiber retracement, and if that is uh, put together, you you have, for example, 70, 80 percent of chance to, that your short trade will, will be successful. So that is the answer to your question. You need to have a confluence with other important indicators of the price, fiber retracement, and uh, some sort of bearish reversal pattern. So that is that is the best answer to your question. Great, awesome stuff. All, always look for confluence. Oh, absolutely. Very important indeed. That will always increase your odds in, in, in all trading, whatever time frame and whatever indicators or strategy you use. This is now, we're zooming in from the day to the four hour. This is a one hour chart actually, uh, also quite recent, where you can see different stuff happening and, you know, you can basically use price action and trend lines and you can do a lot of analysis. Um, here you can see this trend line on the left, the black one, giving resistance at the orange circle, pushing it down again, but also the fact that we're retracing back to a key high where I have the pink circle and the red line. Another reason why we have a, uh, a move down, all right? Uh, the green support level, you can see also acting as a, a bit of support here or the trend line here as the euro hits 133.04 in the meantime. I'm also following. Yeah, 33, 33 now. No. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was tempted to enter a, a long trade, but uh, that is not just my style. I want to retracement by it. This, this move is so strong. Uh, it's amazing indeed. It's amazing. Turn uh, okay. <laughs> I'll show I show my my uh, manually drawn levels, so you will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so you know, also this trend line right in here, 
Uh, you can see several touches again acting as support. Here in another example of resistance acting in, but I didn't draw a trend line here actually, but here you can see if you draw these bottoms that although we have resistance kicking in, the down move is not going as far and we, we see that support buyers are stepping in close to the to the lows here, pushing the price up. And when we get a break, we get a hook back. And what does this look similar uh, familiar to you maybe? It is it's very doesn't this pattern look very close to that pound dollar in the day chart that we just saw two slides ago? Let me go quickly back to that one. It's right flat here. top ascending triangle. Exactly. Hook back, boom. And that's almost identical in its in its behavior, and that's not so uh, surprising, but it is funny to see. Um, so nice break, hook back, and continuation. If we move on, very nice impulse, and again we got a small consolidation zone break, hook back, bounce, bigger hook back, bounce, and again here a resistance line, acting a trend line acting as resistance, right? So tons of examples, just pick any chart. Any time frame, and you know, you will find loads of examples. So that's basically was more focusing on, on these slides, more on trend lines and tops and bottoms for resistance. But in fact, also candle highs and lows, definitely acting as a, as resistance and support. Of course, these daily highs, for example, would be a top. Of course, on the lower time frame, would be. Uh, equivalent of a one hour top or one hour bottom so definitely major levels and you can see this was the first area I zoomed in and you can see what kind of tons of examples you have of daily highs and lows and if you just avoid going short and long when you're approaching that level that would probably already save you a lot of headache uh, except maybe this move up where we definitely had a clear breaks of highs and strong closes above it. The rest of the chart really giving a lot of examples where every time where we approach a high the next day, like here, you know, it definitely signaling resistance here, of course, at the bottom support. And, you know, tons of examples on both sides. Here, look at that, push up, resistance, push-up resistance. So, of course, these a lot of candlestick patterns will maybe seem now familiar to you after looking at those bullish and bearish price action uh, candlestick patterns that we've already looked at uh, two and three weeks ago. Uh, yes, exactly, Santosh. They definitely help in reading, you know, reading candlestick patterns definitely help as well in determining support and resistance. Everything ties in together. So, any other questions? Uh, someone's asking that they cannot see my charts. Um, does anyone help, else have that? Toronto, you can see the chart. Yeah, yeah, I can see the yeah. chart. It's okay. Daily chart. Uh, pound daily, right? Daily yes. highs and lows. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? I hope. It's pretty clear on my screen. Okay, so if someone else is saying, yeah, okay, I got three confirmations. So probably, Marcus, it's it's probably on your side. Can you, maybe the screen is hidden somewhere behind a program? That could be an answer. Probably. Oh, yeah. oh okay, you can see it now. Great. Okay, cool. So uh, FIBS, of course, also well known for their ability to be a resistance. Um, this is the euro dollar before it's hitting the 133 now. Uh, this was the 5th of June yesterday when it was still at 131 and you can see that uh, you know this fib hitting the 50 fib hitting the 618 fib and the 786 nicely um, and it may be paused here at the 886 I thought it would be more of a uh, of a rejection there at that level looking at these 50 looking at the behavior price as shown in response to the 50, 618, and the 786 fit. In this case, um, it didn't respect it as much as I thought it would, and as we were discussing in the trading room this morning, 
But then again, I guess this is maybe not a typical average movement either. So it uh, blasted through that more or less at 86. But still, probably, I mean, to Dantra, you, you, you said that you sold the 131, 131.50 area, right? Yeah, 3150 yeah. area was a really uh, strong resistance. But that is, that is, I mean, usually when we trade without those important news events, and today mm -hmm. I warned, I warned about this day some, I think, three or four days ago, and yeah. I said the price would probably range before, before Thursday, because, you know, bid rate announcements are always, always very risky, especially with that NFP tomorrow. Yeah. So what I do, I tend to stay out of this. I, guys, uh, you know, I do this for a living, so this is my profession. And I really don't, I don't trade when moves are so, so volatile. Uh, for you to trade, the market needs to be calm. If you want to gamble, then you can enter this market. You can be profitable for one month, and in the next couple of months, you will probably lose all of your, your money because uh, you, you you know you need to know how to trade. For example, even a, a kid could have traded this move. Open a random a long or short, and then dive into the market. And wow, in one day I made a I don't know ten thousand. And what what will happen in a couple of months? Uh, it uh, probably the market will punish punish uh, that uh, guy, and he will lose all of his, his money. So. Uh, for trading, you need to be traders, and that is what we are trying to achieve here, to help you to become, this is the first step for you in becoming traders. So yeah, I, we said the same in the trading room of today. Of course, don't, don't ever grieve for these kind of moves. So It's, it's definitely a day that, you know, the, the levels, the normal, usual levels are just not as important as as always. It's just like a, a, a totally a day on its own where usual technical things kind of If less you ask me, if you ask me, I will start training on Monday. So I really, yeah. I really don't. I'm I'm not uh, worried about uh, worried about this move. Yeah. Uh, this will print out new highs. We will see what retracement will be. We will do it technically again. So just you need to be patient. This is very fast market, so you need to, to stalk your prey and then ambush it. So don't, you need to be smart, not stupid, you know. You need to exactly. be very smart to keep your equity and to make profits. So Absolutely. Trading, yeah. Many, many traders uh, have, uh, make mistakes in, uh, for example, they, the, the first thing they do is to make profits. No, it's protecting your equity. Then it's about making profits. I'm really happy with uh, anywhere from 2 to 10 percent per month. So that is my goal and that is how I do. Anywhere from 2 to 10 percent per month is a great thing. Exactly. I know so many traders that that just skip today and tomorrow because it's just it's just different trading and uh, you know it doesn't make sense to to really feel feel to be greedy about it and you know try to catch every single move. No, it's better not. Of course. To. We have a question on um, how do we get these lines? It's just a fib retracement actually tool, which you can click on. We had actually a, a webinar on fib, so you'll find a recording on the Admiral Market website if you go to education and go to videos, and there's an archive section. Um, what, what I what you just do is take that fib tool, put it here, and place it here. That's how I do it. I know that some people do it the other way around, but um, this is how I like it. And then you'll get the 382, 50, 618, I think, are standard. Um, but then I add the 786, 886, and 236. But more on that in that Fibonacci video. And there's someone asking how you can get the webinar. That's if you go to Admiral Markets website and then just go to Forex edu Education, I think it says. Then go to videos, and then archives. Uh, let's see. Fib extensions basically you would take a level, grab it to the next high, and then to the low, and then you would get levels here. All right. Those would be also uh, resistance, just like, for example, how I use targets would also be resistance or support, of course, depending on which direction you're going to. In this case, support. 
because the target would be to the downside. Although we never got there in this case, but um, let's see, what is this? This is, so that's the fibs basically. Um, what is this? This is pound dollar four hour chart. Ah, this is chart patterns. So just wanted to give you one example regarding chart patterns that, you know, you can s use that as, these are horizontal lines as well, I guess. You can see break, hook back, or a uh, bear flag break. But I wanted to show you one example where, because sometimes I think what I want to warn you of is be careful of certain levels that you think might become support or don't. For example, here, this was a high, and this was a high, and you, you might see a resistance and then a move up again. And I'm sure that some, after this webinar, if they would be looking at this live, might, might think, hey, look, this is a resistance that we broke. So if we go back here, uh, it will definitely become support. So you can see example here that it, it isn't. And in my opinion, this was the major high. So that's something you should also be aware of, that um, there are different levels that are have different importances as well. Not necessarily each top or each high is created equal or has the, the same importance. Um, as you can see here, this move went up in a nice correction, broke these tops, but still respected this high and then came crashing and, and didn't find much support, at least that we can see on this four hour chart, hardly anything is noticeable, you know, a very small time frame, maybe a minor bounce here, definitely not acting as support and a, and a total crash uh, coming in because there's a huge downtrend in here. So you definitely want to be aware of the trend and preferably use those support and resistance levels in, in the direction of the trend and, and not opposite of the trend. So that that would be a good thing to be aware of. All right, that's that's all I wanted to share with you. I guess the moment I think. Yep, that's it. And now I will share with you, especially for those traders who, and I think there is most of them who did, who never uh, happen to see what Camarilla Marimet is. I will just made an entry entry points some entry points about those indicators. And if you're interested, you can Google it and uh, uh, try to enter into it a little bit more. So basically, uh, what is Camarilla? Uh, when I started to trade some four, four and a half years ago, I really stumbled upon a, an indicator which really, really, for me, it was a perfect, uh, how can I say, newbie indicator. And from time to time, I really... I really like to see if there is a confluence uh, there around those levels uh, with my and Camarilla pivot points. So what is Camarilla? Camarilla is basically an indicator which is giving you a very precise levels uh, where the price will head to. So there are a couple of lines. Those are basically H3, L3 levels and then there are uh, H4 and H5 are also L4 and L5 levels. So, uh, usually what happens, uh, I will show you a slide afterwards, but uh, you need to be paying attention to this. If the market opens between the H3 and L3 levels, you must wait for the price to approach either of these two levels. Whichever level it hits first gives us the first trade. So the first trade is always the most profitable one as uh, uh, the market is still testing those levels before entering a full-blown mode. So, uh, for markets to be tradable, we need volatility. And uh, uh, when markets are starting, uh, uh, when markets start to open, volatility rises up. And in the first attempt, it usually rejects of those levels. The price is rejected of those levels. And though uh, Camarilla is maybe, I cannot say the most accurate, but it is one of the most accurate indicators showing, showing uh, uh, where the price will react. So it's not predicting indicator, it's reacting indicator. And it is really, uh, maybe with, with Muremat, this is the most advanced indicator ever made. So, uh, after the price has made its move. We want a short trade. We look for the uh, price to bounce back down into the H3 level 
before entering the trade. So, first, if we want, uh, for example, a short trade, we look for the price to approach H3 level. When the price approaches H3 level, it usually will make some sort of a pattern of a, in a, uh, on a lower time frame, 15 minutes. And then, if we see that the price cannot break above H3 indicator, I'm talking about the first move to H3 line. So, concentrate. The first move, uh, it usually bounces back towards the L3. And 60% of the time or 50% of the time, the price will bounce back between H3 and L3. And that we call a ranging market. So that is one of indicators that can also also show that the market is ranging. Uh, stops are usually placed above H4 for short trades and below L4 for long trades. And what happens if the market opens outside the H3 or L3? Then we should wait for the market to retreat back through L3 or H3 level and because we trade with the trend, we need to trade with the trend. If it breaks it up, we want to retrace back below or above. In short trade example, we need the price to retrace back to H3 level, below that, and goes below it. And then we know that we trade with the trend. Same for L3 level. If the price has gone to below L3 and suddenly it uh, starts to retrace, to retrace and jumps off again above the L3 level, then we know that it's basically we are in uptrend and we want to play straight around, around those, uh, around that L3 level. The same goes for stop losses. Stop losses are usually when you go with Camarilla uh, pivot points. You usually put a stop loss just before or just above uh, uh, H4 or below L4. It depends whether you are short or long. So you can you can try to show uh, next slide, Chris, please. Yeah, just uh, wanted to mm -hmm. say that uh, uh, Johan, you could watch the video recording, which will be posted, and you can pause the you know the video on this slide, okay? And then you can uh, note that down. Uh, I'm, I have a question here. Rejection should be seen in M15, usually in M15, but you can also see it. Uh, you, you, uh, watch. Uh, Watch this. Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes is very good for intraday trade setups if you are trading four-hour time frame. So for intraday setups, M15 can be the most accurate if you want to squeeze some I don't know 30, 50 pips. So yes, rejection is good to be seen in M15 because it's neither H1 or M5. So it is the medium time frame. So it's good if you see a rejection and spot rejection in N15. So when the price approaches to, to uh, H3, you want to zoom into your lower time frame and try to spot a pattern, bearish candlestick or, or uh, some sort of Fibonacci retracement close to that H3 line. So, M15 is a good time frame of choice. We can see the next slide here, and here is it. Usually, when prices, when price and market opens, this is the picture of cable four hour, four hour of today. You see, the price has jumped of the L3 level. You see. The price first break, broke, uh, broke up to L3, then it retested L3, then it continued to go, to go up. This is 4-hour time frame. And what you should do is zoom into 15 minutes time frame as soon as the price goes above L3 and started to retrace towards the L3. Then you zoom into 15 minutes time frame, you will probably see a pattern a long pattern, a, a bullish candlestick around L3, and you can try to push it up to H3. As we can see in this example, uh, price went to H3, and then it started to bounce off H3. You can 
always placed, of course, a stop loss to break even after the price has made some sort of profits, what is adequate for you. There is no rule of thumb. For example, after 15, 10, 12, 15 pips, you can try to put stop loss to break even if you want to squeeze it. And then what happened? You see, price will usually, usually it will go 50% of the time, it will go just uh, above L3 and, and below H3. If it shoots above H3, price will try to push it to H4. So if the market is going upward, then we should see if the price is closing above H3 and, it, and the candle closes, uh, closes above H3. For example, this 4-hour, it tried to go below uh, H3, but it closed above. So that, is, that was the signal to go long. Then again, you zoom into 15 minutes time frame, you find your entry, and then it usually we shoot up to H5. And what happens is we put stop loss below the last swing low. So you don't have to put your stop loss below uh, L4 because that is not a valid level anymore. The most valid level is H3 and last swing low in this example. And what will happen if the price goes below L4? As we can see in, in this example, the candle, this pin, pin bar, went to L3. It perfectly uh, bounced off L3 and closed below L4. And that was the signal for us to try to zoom into 15-minute time frame. And after that, you see the candle, the pin bar candle. It again went to L4 and it was down to L5. So Camarilla is really a great indicator if you know how to use it. And uh, I, from, from time to time, I like to spot some confluence between my levels and those, and those indicators. So it's, it's very simple. Below H3, we show it above L3, we long it. If the price closes above H4, we go for a long breakout. If it closes just above H3, we can try to place a swing uh, swing uh, swing uh, long, and if it closes below L4 or L3, close below L3 or L4, we can try to place a, a swing short. So it's not that complicated, you just need to be accustomed to it. There are basically six lines, and those are very, very precise. Very precise. Okay, we can move, if we don't have any questions, we can move to our, our next slide. Manually drawn levels. Those are my favorite uh, sort of uh, horizontal support and resistance levels. We need to watch for important touches. Touches are right in history and the future. So those rejections of that uh, abstract, those are, those are abstract levels because the price is seen, is seen basically as, as how it moves in our chart. But then we, we, we draw that uh, trend line, horizontal trend line, and that is called horizontal level of support or resistance. And touches are writing history and the future, because if the price has made a move to important point, we can be sure if the price made a t uh, two or three touches that it will make also six, seven, eight, and more, even more. So everything can be seen on charts. Price tends to gravitate to those historical support and resist levels. And uh, that is the most uh, uh, viable on our majors, major currency crosses, Euro, USD, Pound, Dollar, Swiss, Aussie. And be, because price will always be magnetically drawn to those historical support and resist levels. Why? Because there are historical buyers and sellers. The more touches it has, the more important it is. You can see it when you zoom into a higher time frame, then you, you just uh, zoom a little bit uh, to see a complete picture. You can see how many touches the, the, the price has made on a particular level. It is best drawn on higher time frames, of course, because on higher time frames, we can see the whole forest, not just a tree. It requires experience. It uh, really uh, requires experience. And uh, it really does because I couldn't have done it when I started to trade. So 
after a lot of screening time, I started to know this, to know this uh, that a uh, pretty, pretty easy and uh, I can say really accurately. And that is my favorite way of drawing the levels. I like to use from time to time Camarilla, maybe from time to time Merrimat, uh, feeble pivots, but. Uh, I want to see confluence between those indicators and my manually drawn levels. So those tend to be the best if you know how to draw it. If you have uh, experience with it, you can really be a killer of the market. I can I will show you on our on the next slide how it looks like. You probably see it uh, when I do my analysis. You always see those red lines. And those are my manually drawn levels. So you can see uh, those are all historically important uh, uh, price touches. So I I have I have marked on the chart where the price is making its its uh, touch. So you can see all those marked points are basically very important points. Plus minus five ten. It's it's nothing when you trade on 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 four, on four hour time frame and you when you trade intraday. So basically. Those are many, very, very important levels. And you need to know, you just need to zoom a little bit out and to see where the price has made its touches. And when, it, when you see it, it will be much easier for you to drone them yourself. So you see how the price, is, how the price reacted to 31.75. First, we had some sort of, of uh, bounce, also 31.26 today also 3042 also today 3197 you see it hasn't it was it was really hard for the price to go below 39 uh, 3197 then it, it when it when it when it was broken it shoot it to 30 uh, 3247 the 3250 so basically those are i i like to draw it myself We can move to the next slide. Beautiful that chart, eh? Yeah, I like it really. It's pretty uh, like clean. It. Absolutely. Uh, Marimet, uh, well, that is one of most accurate market indicators ever made, uh, being toe to toe with Cabarilla. It's complicated and requires the special study of Marimet itself. I will only mention it, and uh, you have online courses based on Marimet. It's really a complex trading system, a complex trading strategy because it's based on GAN principles. It's advanced mathematics, advanced algorithm mathematics. So it uses octaves. I will show you on the next example. But uh, what you what you should do is basically you need to to enroll for a special course if you want to study mathematics perfectly. That is that requires a lot of in, uh, attention, a lot of dedication. It is not easily taught. Uh, it's really uh, one of most advanced strategies ever, ever, which which was ever made. And it, it I personally try to use those levels, and it, it I, I use it just for for bounces, uh, because it's it's really too complex. And if you want to, to again to to learn about it uh, a little bit more, you try to enroll for a special course. You have it all over the internet, but uh, basically, I cannot advise uh, where to to do that. You can Google it and you can find it. Just enter Marmat classes or Marmat uh, system or something like that. You will see. The, but it is really, if you master it, you can be a real professional trader. It. Uh, comprises of nine equidistant lines which run parallel to one another. And what is the most important, uh, Marimet lines are just, uh, those are support and resistance lines. And uh, they're not predictive. And that means that this is really uh, very important. When you trade with these lines, there is a risk that uh, the price will really uh, go above or below it, and uh, uh, you never try to to uh, any of these on these horizontal level support is, uh, to to find it as predictive. All supports and resistance lines are are reactive, and you know my favorite quote is uh, 
uh, re uh, reaction, not prediction. So we don't predict where the price will be. We need to, to place our stop loss and our target prices. It's some sort of prediction because th that is the only thing. But when you enter the trade, you don't predict. You need to react. And when you react, you need to see a bounce off of the support or resistance or a very close entry to a support or, or resistance line. So, of course, when you trade, uh, when you uh, do any trading strategy based on Marimat or Camarilla lines, on uh, horizontal levels of support or resistance, you need to have a strong risk management and stop loss to avoid losing your capital. So I will explain just a bit of Marimet in our next uh, uh, few slides. Mm -hmm. it, uh, so I missed the last two minutes. I was, but the equidistant. Did you explain that recently? Equidistant I, I, lines. Equidistant yes. lines. Equidistant lines are basically uh, the lines which are parallel to each other. Uh, those are. Uh, you will see in our next slide. Gotcha. Uh, you can okay. show it. So yeah. those are all equidistant lines. You see, those are perfectly aligned. And gotcha. that is why Mr. Murray called this harmonic octave. Because those are those lines are equidistant lines and they are all perfectly aligned. So I will try to just to explain a little bit of this Merrimet line. So I I really it will take a lot of time and I'm not a master of Merrimet, but I use it to my advantage, and I know how they should be used if you want to to trade those those bounces of the Marimet. That, that is the only one part of Marimet uh, trading strategy, uh, trading bounces of those lines. So you can see in this uh, illustration, we we have uh, all levels from zero zero eight to eight eight. 4.8 is major reversal line and it's usually called a pivot point of Marimet. So uh, the range between 3.8 and 5.8 is the normal trading range. And price tends to consolidate in, on the, these levels before falling to 3.8 or rising 5.8 beyond this trading range. So 3.8 and 5.8 are usually the trading range of the market. And like all support and resistance levels, when the price is in between two lines, the upper line is considered as resistance and lower line is considered as support. When the price rises above 5.8, because it's a resistance, and touches 6.8, it has a tendency to reverse to retest the 5.8 level before heading high. That's called a Marimet 5.8 retest. The same is also applicable to downtrends. The price tends to reverse to retest 3.8 level before heading down. So if the price moves to 2.8, it tends to retest to 3.8 level before heading down. So we know that we are in downtrend. So you can just you can read to this chart and you can see where the you can see those octaves basically. So when the price hits top of the octave 8.8 eight, and 08 that means the price is overbought and oversold there is usually uh, a call, something called overshot the price overshot the octave if it goes through 88 to 1 plus 18 and plus 28 you will see that in indicator and that is usually usually the most the highest or the lowest point the price will usually reverse when it touches those levels we can see our next example. We can see in our next example, these are minus 1, minus 2, and plus 1, and plus 2. So what should we do? We basically want to trade the premium range. And by premium, I, I tell that is in between 3.8 and 5.8. If the price goes below 3.8 to 2.8, and then retest is 3.8. We know that the price is in downtrend, and we go for short trades. Also, when the price goes above 5.8 and uh, goes to 6 or 7.8, it usually retraces the next uh, closest low or lower octave before it goes up. So, if it, if it, for example, if the market is open 
just around 78 it will test 88 and then it will retrace to 78 before we can place another buy to one uh, plus one eight then we are entering in a selling premium selling zone that is plus eight and plus two and premium buying opportunities are minus one and minus two because those two tend to give uh, the best risk to reward ratio but usually usually you need to follow this is really complex system but if you place indicator you can google it Marimet indicator X it's called Marimet X lines it's the most accurate Marimet indicator which I have uh, found it and it's really very very good Marimet, Marimet X, X lines it's called you can google it so if the price moves above 8.8, 70% of the time the price will reverse of the plus 1.8 line and retest 8.8 before moving higher to plus 2.8. Same goes for shorts. If price falls below 0.8, 70% of the time the price will reverse of the minus 1.8 uh, uh, line and retest 0.8 before moving lower to minus 2.8. So, uh, Really, the market, uh, if we trade the market as we should, uh, so sell the tops, buy the bottoms. Once we push to the extreme, plus two or minus two, it's extremely unlikely that the price is going to reverse. So then what it happens, it prints out new octaves with new levels. So we watch new levels. So we always want to trade the first touch of those levels and they are the most profitable. Usually the first or second touch are most profitable. So this was just a, uh, a small example of, of um, Marimet and really those, these lines tend to be maybe the most accurate lines of all indicators along toe-to-toe -to -toe with Camarilla. But those are very, very complex, much complex than Camarilla. You can always, you can always want, you always want to trade in between 3.8 and 5.8. And if the price shoots above 5.8, we assume that we are in uptrend. Below 2.8, we are in downtrend. But we want uh, price to retest 3.8 to move lower or again 5.8 to move higher. So there was a close, uh, some short explanation of Mari math levels. So those lines tend to be very strong support and resistance lines. I think that we've gone through all of our materials, so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, to ask us. Alessandro actually has a question there, in what time frame they are more powerful? Okay, Marimet is usually used on one hour time frame and, and you, you can use it to your advantage on any higher time frame. Don't use it on smaller time frames because one hour time frame is intraday time frame. So, Indicators should print all the prices accurately on one hour time frame. This is how I do it, one hour time frame when I use Marimet. Any any questions? Andre is asking if you use if you use this Marimet and Camarilla or you just draw the SNR manually now. I, now I, I draw only manually. I draw it only manually, but I always check uh, with Camarilla. I, now I don't use Marimet because it's really complex. I gave you an example. If you want to really go into that material, you should try to enroll a special online course. But for me, I use manually drawn levels, and I always want to see Camarilla lines because Camarilla is uh, really well, I, I, I have a knack for using and watching Camarilla, so Camarilla pivot points are really, for me, uh, one of most favorite. Cam uh, the best Camarilla indicator is Camarilla DT8, called Camarilla DT8. You can Google it, so Camarilla DT8. That is the best Camarilla I know of. You can also use Camarilla historical, uh, but I use Camarilla DT8 because all historical prices are on my chart drawn manually. So Camarilla DT8. Yes, DT8.
Will this webinar be available on Admiral's website in full length? I think it will be and it is being recorded at the moment. Do not know where exactly to place stop loss. If you use Camarilla pivot points for long trades, stops are placed just below L4. For short trades, stops are placed above H4. So, uh, the indicator will print L3 long, L4 short breakout, H4, uh, H4, sorry, H3 short and H4 long breakout. So if you want to trade a long trade, you place your stop just below L4 short breakout if you want to trade long. If you want to trade short, you enter short close as close to H3 as it can be, then you place your stop loss just above H4 long breakout. And if you want to trade breakouts, you want to price for a long trade to, uh, to break H4, then retest it, and to go to H5 target, and below L L4, then uh, to retest it and go to L5 target. So another question is, what difference do you see between Camarilla and classical daily pivot points? Camarilla tend to be more accurate because it really t gives you a bounce, uh, bouncing points. Uh, reactive bouncing points. So Camarilla is a sort of a really, uh, I, 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 I like Camarilla uh, more than classical daily pivot points. For me it's, it's uh, a lot more accurate. Uh, how can I get the Camarilla indicator? You can get it by googling to it. Try to google it and you will find it. How does their accuracy, their accuracy eff effectiveness compare? If you use Camarilla indicator along with, uh, if you know what support and resistance levels are, as we show you today, effectiveness is really good because you can always have a scalp trades. Don't squeeze into the market with full length. If you scalp it, it's really accurate. If you go long, close to L3 or short, uh, uh, just close to H3. Uh, Marimet is more complex, so it cannot be compared uh, purely mathematically. You need to know to work with it, so always demo it first before going live. On what time frames do you always check Camarilla? One uh, hour time frame, Camarilla, one hour time frame, exclusively. Marimet with a setting of 64 or 96, 64, go with 64. You can try to 30 to lower to 32, but 64 is, I think it's most accurate. So that was the answer, guys, to your questions. If you have any questions, you can ask us, no problem. Do you mean Camarilla TT8? Phew, I have DT8, but you can, you can plot it on your chart. I, I'm not sure what is TT8. I said DT8. D as Daniel, D, D, T, 8. So, D, T, 8 is a suffix of Camarilla. Camarilla, D, T, 8 indicator. Yeah. Mm, of these slides in order to study them at home deeply. So, you want to study those slides deeply, of course. You can watch it again as this webinar is being recorded and then you can go again through all of these slides and, and try to find an indicator, try to find Camarilla or Marimet and then try to plot it on your chart and demo test it before going live, always, always demo test it. But to your knowledge, I have traded, really I like to use those Camarilla points. I just when I, I don't trade it mechanically, I just compare it to my manually drawn levels. And if I see that uh, uh, those levels are very close to it, uh, confluence, I then am more, I'm uh, more sure that my trade will be profitable. No Camarilla indicator. It's easy to find it really. Google it, be patient, you will find it. It's not a problem to find it, believe me. It's very easy to find it. No problem. Any more questions? 
when when should I use Fibonacci or pivot or both? You use it in conjunction. You use Fibonacci retracement tool along with pivot points. So you always use it together because it will give you a confluence. I mentioned it so many times before. The higher the confluence is, the bigger the confluence is, the uh, more odds you stack into your favor. So, when you enter the market, your odds are 50-50. By stacking the confluence indicators, Fibonacci points and Camarilla or Morimat, you stack odds into your favor. So, you always use Fibonacci in conjunction with pivot points and support on the resistance lines. You don't use it, you don't use it just by themselves. You need to have a confluence of those levels. Uh, my uh, if you're intraday trader, your levels are drawn on one hour time frame. I draw it on four hour time frame, but I can I can use one hour time frame if I want to use scalp swings. Those are moves in between 20, um, 10, 15, and uh, 30, 40 points. So one hour or four hours, more or less the same. Four hours is if you want to hold the trade for a complete session or cross session and one hour is if you want to just scalp swing the market. So basically I, I, I personally prefer to, uh, to find it on a four hour time frame but I also can use one hour time frame. It depends if market is ranging, if market is more volatile. For example, this move on Euro Next, uh, I, what I will do, I will analyze it on four-hour time frame because the move was big, huge, and if the market is arranging, then I use one hour. Com compare them to your manual uh, support resistance. Do you do you do it? Yes, I compare manually drawn support and resistance with Camarilla indicator. Candlestick pattern when we trade, of course, all we use candlesticks. We had. We had a webinar about advanced and uh, advanced bullish and bearish candlestick patterns. Always use them in conjunction with uh, support and resistance levels. Always, because those are used in conjunction with those with those support and resistance levels. When I do personal tutoring, I really like to, to, to that. That's called pr practical naked trading. And that is what, what you should do. You should always try to find those patterns close, very close to support and resistance lines. Don't try to spot it um, if you don't have uh, support and resistance lines plotted on your chart. They need to be as close uh, to support or resistance as close as it, they can be in order to have a good re risk to reward and in order to have a bigger, bigger uh, uh, bigger, how can I say, um, uh, chance, higher chance for your trade to succeed. So I think those, those, those were the questions, Chris. Yeah, sounds good to me indeed. Yeah, sounds good to me. So guys, concentrate on these. Now you know what support and resistance indicators are. Try to support advanced bullish and bearish candlesticks close to that lines, and also also trying to use Fibonacci tool to your advantage. That's all should be wrapped up into one trading strategy. And if you know, and if you're following us, you would make of this of this couple of webinars a good trading strategy. And ba and actually, if you watch next week's webinar on June the 13th, you might even add some stuff to that as well because we're taking a look at intra-week strategies. Yeah, intra-week, yeah. That's lined up for 13th and then 20th, we're going to take a look at stop losses. So that's of definitely course. both are very That important. will be most helpful to you. Yeah, definitely. So one on strategies and then two weeks from now, a bit on money management. And uh, stop loss is very important. Excellent. Uh, by the way, uh, also on Tuesday, I hope to see you actually before next week. On uh, let's see, what is the date? Tuesday. I guess it's the 11th. Yes, it is. 
at 7:45 UK time. We'll take a look at the charts together. All right. If you have uh, if you have time, please join me. And otherwise, hope to see you next week. Yeah, guys. Hope to see you next week too. Being good uh, talking to you and uh, uh, green peaks peeps to you all. So see you next week. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. The organ.